I'm Zane Lowe, and today I'm taking the genius test to see how deep my knowledge is of the Beastie Boys. I don't look at the Beasties as, as, as one of the great rap groups, I look at them as one of the great groups. And I think they're in the top 10 greatest groups in music history. Why else would I be here if I wasn't coming here to ace this? Straight up 100%. What's the Beastie Boys' only top 10 single on the Billboard Hot 100? I'm nervous about this right now because I, I just wasn't expecting chart questions. It's five for your rights party. You can just write 10 now if you want. What legendary producer handled License to Ill? That's a tough one. Uh... It's, it's Rick Rubin. You know, Rick's reputation obviously now is arguably the greatest record producer of the last, I mean, him and Dre, right? The last sort of 30 years. You know, he's the one who brought the 808 through and said, this is the future, and he was absolutely right. What was the name of the Beastie's 1982 hardcore punk EP? This is another one of those trick questions because, you know, it's, it's, either, it's either one or four. I'm gonna go with A, Cookie Puss. Oh, you fucker. Oh. I need a minute. Okay, I'm ready. What music festival did the Beastie Boys organize in 1996? I'm not even going to pretend that I don't know the answer to this because i got to get back on track. It's answer number one, the Tibetan Freedom Concert. Um, although the Grand Royal Summit is definitely something I wish that had been done. What is the Beastie in Beastie Boys an acronym for? The answer is number three. Wow, you put me on a spot with the acronym question. You know how hard it is to come up with a spontaneous acronym? Z, Z words are hard too. Zapping all naysayers every time on the spot. I mean, you know, in an hour I'll be like, ah, oh, I could have done one way better than that. But. According to Mike D's lyrics on Sure Shot, everything he does is funky, like what famous soul singer? And everything I do is funky, like Lee Dorsey. Answer number two. Look, if Mike D's gonna go and say everything I do is funky, like Lee Dorsey, you should go find some funky Lee Dorsey records. That's why he said it. Original Beasties member Kate Schellenbach went on to play drums for what 90s alternative band? The answer is number four, Luscious Jackson, who was signed to the Grand Royal label. Interesting story, I know Kate Schellenbach. I met her 18 months ago. I was working on another job and she came up and she was like, hey, I'm Kate, I know Mike. And I was like, Kate, and she was like, Schellenbach. And I'm like, holy shit. What was the first album that the Beastie Boys created with renowned DJ Mixmaster Mike? Uh, the first album that the Beastie Boys made uh, after the infamous Tweak Scratch answer phone message from Mixmaster Mike was C or 3 Hello Nasty. I mean, you got to remember that he entered into an era with Beastie Boys and then he was the one who sort of said, hey, look, you know, one minute into Root Down, I'm just gonna play this record. I'm gonna queue up another record. And you would watch the Beastie Boys react to what Mike was playing. You know, that spontaneity on stage is something that is just so magic when you're a part of it. The Beastie Boys opened for which pop stars tour in 1985? Phil Collins would have been dope. Uh, but the answer is uh, number two, Madonna. When they, when they finally came on the Check Your Head tour, you're just thinking like, this is crazy. I can't believe this is about to go down, you know? And then my friend nudges me and I look up at the balcony and these three guys walk through the crowd and it's packed. 30 seconds later, the lights go down. Let it flow, let yourself go, slow and low. That is the jam. And they just come flying out the side and it's, it's those three guys. That's one of the most exciting starts of a show of all time because I watched them just rolling like it was nothing and just fucking destroy the place. What was the name of the LA studio and clubhouse the Beastie Boys launched in 1991? The answer, the correct answer to this question is number two, G-Sun Studios in Atwater, California. We all wanted to either be at G-Sun or make our own G-Sun, but ours was not G-Sun. It was more G-shit. Which of these Beastie Boys music videos were not directed by MCA, aka Nathaniel Hornblower? The answer is definitely A, Sabotage. That was directed by Spike Jones and is one of the most all-time iconic music videos ever, 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 ever. 
think the score speaks for itself, doesn't it? I think I am a Beastie Boys genius. I'm a Beastie Boys genius by proxy of the genius of the Beastie Boys. So really this ends with an ultimate thank you and respect to the Beastie Boys for uh, being present in my life. What can I tell you? It's been a, I was nervous. I'm not going to lie. I was nervous about this. You don't really want to be put on the spot when you know you, you, you sort of like care about something genuinely and as deeply as me, my friends and millions of other people do about the Beastie Boys. And that's the thing about the Beasties was no matter whether they were just throwing punk at you or old school hip hop or jazz breakbeat era stuff, they always controlled their environment. Those three individuals and their collaborators were always able to take whatever they wanted to do and make it Beastie Boys. And that's why they are so fucking incredible.